Welcome to Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian, and I'm here with our library bear, Bear. We are here to read you a story about a most unusual job. Today's story is called The Mighty Lalouche. This is written by Matthew Olshan, and it is illustrated by Sophie Blackall. So, here's the back. Come one, come all. The anaconda, the undefeated fight sensation from the jungles of the Amazon, will meet newcomer, the mighty Lalouche, 8 o'clock p.m. Celestial Theater. <laughs> so there you have it. I love the end covers of this book. Aren't they wonderful? So I wonder if you can guess what this most unusual job is. So now we have a glossary of terms here. So, c'est impossible, it's impossible. Défense d'afficher, post no bills. Je suis désolé, I'm sorry. Pardon, monsieur, excuse me, sir. S'il vous plaît, please, and voila, there you have it. The Mighty Lalouche, written by Matthew Olshan, illustrated by... Sophie Blackall. 100 and a few odd years ago in Paris, France, there lived a humble postman named Lalouche. He was small, Lalouche, and rather bony, but his hands were nimble, his legs were fast, and his arms were strong. For company, he kept a finch named Geneviève. His mustache was his other pride and joy. Lalouche's rented room was on the Seine, but unlike all the other rented rooms, it lacked a window with a view. Lalouche pretended not to mind, but how he wished to see the brand new city lights. You know, there was a time when there were no street lights. One day, Lalouche's boss pulled up and said, look here, Lalouche. The Postal Service has just bought a fleet of electric auto cars. A walking postman's far too slow. Je suis désolé, but we're going to have to let you go. And just like that, Lalouche was sacked. Without a job, he'd lose his rented room. Without a room, there'd be no place for Geneviève. Are you nimble? Are you fast? Are you strong? The Bastille Boxing Club, Club seeks sparring partners. We pay cash. Hmm. Well now, here's a confluence of events. You, a boxer, cried Diamond Jacques, who managed all the fighters at the boxing club. I could sneeze and knock you down. But Lalouche refused to leave. Grown-up gloves and boxing booties were just, were much too big. Luckily, the school next door had spares. The boxers all laughed when they saw Lalouche. I'll zap him, cried Ampère. I'll pound him to a pulp, said the piston. But first, I'll tie him in a pretty bow, said the Grec. What do I do, asked Lalouche in the ring at last. Hit me, said the Grec. C'est impossible, said Lalouche. Suit yourself, the Grec replied. He was a master wrestler who liked to twist opponents into pretzels. But Lalouche was just too nimble. Next came Ampère. Let's see him squirm away from these, he said, holding up his gloves, which shone like polished copper. Ampère was electric in the ring. 
His lightning jabs were blinding. His speed was blazing. But Lalouche was even faster. Enough of this tomfoolery, the piston said. It's time to crush the little man. The piston leaped high into the air and landed on Lalouche. The postman crumpled to the mat. Voila, the piston cried. It just takes strength. But Lalouche was even stronger. What's happening? The piston groaned. Pardon, monsieur, said Lalouche. I hope I didn't hurt them, said Lalouche. Forget all that, said Diamond Jacques. You're a sensation. Next Friday night, you'll fight the anaconda, the biggest, baddest beast the city's ever seen. Will I have to hit him? asked Lalouche. Only if you want to live, said Diamond Jacques. There's our poster. Come one, come all. The anaconda, the undefeated fight sensation from the jungles of the Amazon, will meet newcomer, the mighty Lalouche. Celestial Theater, 8 p.m. The hairless muscleman was huge, as tall as a spiral staircase, as wide as a wall of cubbies, as massive as a heap of undelivered packages. Lelouch struck a gallant fighting pose. I'll squeeze him till he pops, the anaconda roared. The bell rang. The fight began. Instantly, the anaconda's arm slithered around Lalouche and locked him in a deadly sleeper hold. Lalouche squirmed and squirmed to no avail. He was nimble, but the anaconda was nimbler. Just then, the first round ended. Lucky for Lalouche. Don't give up, said Diamond Jacques. Confuse him with your speed. Lalouche's booties skipped across the canvas. He fainted left and right. His punches were too fast to see his gloves a whistling blur. He even, he ran figure eights around the anaconda's legs. He was fast, but the anaconda was even faster. Round three began. With one enormous stride, the anaconda stomped Lalouche. The little fighter was pinned he was strong, but the anaconda was stronger. The anaconda knew he'd won. He grinned and took a moment to impress the crowd by kneeling down and then flexing his gigantic gleaming arms. But one should never underestimate a man who loves his finch. Lalouche sprang up. For country, male, and Genevieve, he cried. And when the bell was rung, one man stood tall, the mighty Lalouche. Just then, Genevieve flew down and perched upon Lalouche's shoulder. And when he smiled, the crowd erupted in a frenzy. Bravo, bravo, they cried. Cameras flashed. Lalouche's bony arm was raised in victory. From that day on, Lalouche fought every challenger who dared to climb into the ring. Old Shatterhand and Blériot, the Bolshevik, the Pointillist, and even the Misanthrope. He never lost. They never won. And yet, stationery stores could make him sad, and envelopes, and above all, stamps. He missed the cobbled streets of his old neighborhood, and birthday parcels, and garret stairs with all their twists and turns. In his heart, Lalouche was still a postman. So when his old boss called and said, these auto cars have been a complete disaster, s'il vous plaît, would you consider your old job? Lalouche's boxing days were done. You can't retire, cried Diamond Jacques. The people need you. Perhaps Lelouch replied, but even more, the people need their mail. 
And just like that, Lelouch traded in his famous gloves and booties for a humble postman's uniform. He reported to his old post office at the crack of dawn, and in no time, people had forgotten he'd ever been gone. All was just as it had been, with one exception. At the end of a long day, after all the mail was finally delivered and the sorting room was tidied up and swept, Lelouch would stretch and yawn and head back home to Genevieve and to his old apartment building on the Seine, where he'd taken a new room with skylights and a special nook for Genevieve and a most spectacular view. Now, this book has an afterword about boxing in Paris and electric cars. If you would like to find out more about this, you can check out The Mighty Lalouche by Matthew Olshan, illustrated by Sophie Blackall from the Wethersfield Proctor Library. Well, I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian. This is our Bear Bear at the Wethersfield Proctor Library Storytime. We hope you enjoyed today's story and we'll see you again. Bye.